Hello everybody, welcome back to the lab. Uh, as you can see, I've made a lot of progress on the Rep Rep uh, Max. I have got some bits, but most of them not. And I'm waiting on Amazon and it's Christmas, so most of it's sitting in a box, but uh, that'll be next. Cut a little pl heated plate for the hotbed out of some aluminium I got from Wix. And uh, <coughs> yeah, the rest of it is waiting on parts. I've got a little 120mm square hotbed in there. J head extruder, um, various bits and pieces, but that's going to be another video. I've just got a couple of mods on the Anet A8 that I've made. Okay, this is the first one. On the wire carriage underneath, um, the way this works, you've got an H plate, and then the hotbed screws onto the H plate, and then underneath the H plate, the, the, you've got the belt attaches halfway up and uh, runs all the way round. Focus, please. All the way round, and I'll just disable the steppers and show you something. Now, for the longest time, when it was coming forward to the extremes, it was crunching, it was making a crunching noise, and it took me a long while to figure out what it was. And what it basically is, is underneath there you can see a white block. That white block is another one of these. Um, and I'll put a link. But basically, what that white block does is it keeps the belt level all the way along because previously the belt is bent up towards the middle as it comes in this way the approach of it onto that wheel is too steep and the teeth slip over the top and that happens both ends and that's what causes it to make crunching noise so I'll put a link for the description in that or a link for that in the description even Second thing I had wrong was I had the lead screws stuffed tight right down into these couplers and a big gap at the top which I stuffed up with those little buttons on the last video. That was completely wrong. These should be 5 million only and should have not much of a gap at the top but 5 mil in. Uh, and if you need to do that you can do it quite easily just unscrewing the grub screws, pulling them up <coughs> and then you don't have to take much else apart. Um, and then just to level it, just twist one of them until you get them level. I, I like to use a pair of calipers just to measure from the base to the top of the leaf screw or something. So that's number two. Number three, um, I made a little um, bracket to hold the fermester in um, because I don't know if you can see there, but that little white or translucent cable going into the hole in the middle that's a fermister. Nothing much holding that in apart from the tape. The actual heat element is screwed from a grub screw underneath into the block, but uh, it's just taped there. So I've a lot of people would attach this cable here. I couldn't do it the way I put it together, so I've made a little um, bracket. And that, there's two holes on the back of this uh, plate that holds everything together. They're already there. Two and three screws. It screws into them holes. And there's a couple of zip tie holes underneath to give you somewhere just to attach it to, so that at least if it You've got a bit more support against being yanked out because what can happen is that and it hasn't happened to me yet thank god but a couple of people on forums say yeah if it catches on something it pulls the fermister out the computer doesn't know any better and it, it thinks it's cooled down so it keeps applying heat and that's not a good thing so it's very much work in progress but um, if anyone wants to come up with any other suggestions let me know that's what i think of so far third thing is finally the um, mosfet arrived um, and what the MOSFET is, is it's basically just replacing the MOSFET here. I didn't ever have any problem with this, you don't have to do it, you know, people get on with it all day long without even cooling it with a fan. I would advise cooling it somehow, but um, I just weren't very happy with, the, with it, so I'm probably being over the top, but I've put that on there. And how that works is it's taking the battery, or the battery, the um, current from the transformer in there, stripped a bit of the insulation off each side of the wire so it's powering the board and then passing it through going up to the board as before um, I've soldered that in, that's why it's covered in plastic bit um, so you've got power to the board, power to the A-net board and then previously what would happen is the, fir the first one on the left would supply straight to the hotbed now what it, because it's relying on a MOSFET in there now what it's doing is it's, that MOSFET turns on powers the signal to here, that goes into that control in there, which then powers that beefy MOSFET there, 
which has got a big old heat sink on it, much more um, powerful uh, without heating up. That then sends a signal down these wires out here to the hotbed. Um, so might be being over the top there, but you know, for nine quid, I thought it was a good idea. And then finally, I've done away with those little buttons because they squeaked and they were really annoying me, and they were the wrong way to go about it anyway. So I printed these um, holders out, and they've got a, a skateboard bearing, a 2208 bearing, and 22 outer. Uh, eight millimeter in a diameter and it all seems to run a lot smoother so now that I've taken it all apart again seeing as how it's working perfectly I've uh, put it all back together I hope that helps someone cheers see you later